Welcome to Scruffy Church TV. Hi, it's Philip here and welcome to Scruffy TV on this Easter day. Happy Easter. We've got lots of things, wonderful things in our service this morning. We've come to the scruffiest bit of our house. Look, this is where our chickens are. We've got nine hens here. We're having a lovely time. And over there on the far side, that's Pablo, our cockerel. And uh, he's actually called Pablo Pecasso. Um, so I want to see if they've laid any Easter eggs for us. So come and have a look around here. Let's see if we have any eggs this morning. Oh, no eggs at all. Look, they haven't even laid one yet. How disappointing. Well, we're disappointed at not finding anything, but there are some women in the Easter story today who maybe aren't quite so disappointed at not finding anything. Let's go to our scruffy church room and enjoy scruffy church together. We're going to start as we walk to our room with an Easter shout. Now I'm going to say things like I'm going to start with Jesus is risen, alleluia. And you start with alleluia and then you swap it around and say the Jesus is risen bit. So, Jesus is risen, alleluia. Alleluia, Jesus is risen. Brilliant. There is an empty tomb. Alleluia, alleluia. There is an empty tomb. Love wins. Alleluia, alleluia. Love wins. It's time for Easter eggs, alleluia. Hallelujah! It's time for Easter eggs. Here we are, back in a familiar place, in our scruffy TV place. Oh, and you are welcome. I think we'll go back and see if they've laid any Easter eggs at our hens a bit later on. Whatever you do, don't forget to remind me, just in case I forget. So welcome to Scruffy TV. As I said, my name's Philip. Lizzie, my wife, is on the camera and she's not scruffy enough to be on Scruffy TV. No, 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 no. She's far too glam. So she's going to be, <laughs> she's going to be on our camera filming today, which is fantastic. As you know, on Scruffy TV, there's no fancy television stuff. It's a Scruffy church service and that's how we like it. And also, people have been writing in to scruffy at stephensbath.org.uk with their names for a shout out, and that's amazing. So who are we gonna, Ziggy and Marianne, you sent a fantastic picture in, and I'm really sorry that we can't show it. But the reason is, is that Andrew, who is our wonderful friend and colleague who usually edits the programme and puts it onto YouTube for us, he's been really ill this week and he's in hospital. He's getting better now, but he has been quite ill. So we're going to give a big shout out to Andrew Avramenko and we say, Andrew, hope you're better soon. We're going to pray for you a bit later on. But also Elaine and Josh and Abigail's children. Big shout out, Scruffy TV for you. And I'm sure we'll pray that your dad will be back with you really soon. Dan, Zoe, Henry and Ursula Gooding. Hello to you. You wrote in to Scruffy at stephensbath.org.uk and it's really wonderful to say hello to you. Junior Church at Christ Church Julian Road in Bath. Emma and Sarah and all the leaders there and all the scruffies at Christchurch who watch Scruffy TV. Reese, Sophia and Neil Davis from Bath, you wrote in too. Wonderful to welcome you. Kate and Violet Frith, big shout out to you, you're welcome. Tamara and Kevin, who are in their 70s, big welcome to you. A big welcome to everybody who's over 18 who's watching Scruffy Church TV today. Katie and Rafe as well, welcome to you. And Liz and Jenny are watching all the way down in Madrid. Hola! Liz and Jenny, you're very welcome. And finally, but definitely not leastly, Alessia, Sebastian and their mum Hilary are watching in Australia! They're from Canberra and they emailed to say, we're watching Scruffy Church TV and we love it. So g'day to you and happy Easter all the way down in Australia. Wherever you're from, you are welcome to Scruffy TV. Now, as you know, there are things that you can get ready to take part in the service even more. So have a look at what we need today. 
we've got a toilet roll middle, or if you haven't got one of those, you can get, just get some cardboard and make a tube or some paper, just make any kind of tube that you can. Uh, we've got two pieces of paper that you'll need, a red pen and a pencil. So you could stop the film now and go and get those if you like. That would really, really help. We're going to say our prayer to start our service now. And we're going to say our prayer by these wonderful figures. This is uh, the Last Supper and it reminds us, last week we were on Palm Sunday and then we've come, we've come all through Holy Week. This is the Last Supper on Thursday when Jesus gathered with his disciples before he was arrested. And we had this wonderful woman in St. Stephen's called Anita. And she started knitting a nativity. She loved knitting. She started knitting a nativity for us. But unfortunately, she was very old and she died before she could finish. But all the wonderful women from Mother's Union carried on knitting. And not only did they knit a nativity, but they knitted this amazing Last Supper as well. So we're going to look at this Last Supper. There's Jesus right in the middle there. We're going to look at this as we say our prayer. So we'll keep looking. Loving God, we remember last Sunday, Palm Sunday. We remember all the things that happened this week. And we give you thanks that we can be together on Easter Sunday to celebrate your rising to new life. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but I feel like singing the Scruffy song. Let's go over to our singing area and we can sing the Scruffy TV song. If you haven't seen Scruffy TV before, you're especially welcome. You'll get the hang of this. In fact, some people say that once they've heard the Scruffy TV song, they can't get it out of their minds. Oh, here we go. Singing everybody. Sometime on a Sunday, I know where I'll be. Watching my computer to see Scruffy anymore we're going to go back to our story area because I, what I thought I'd do was just tell you the story of what happens today on Easter Sunday and why I'm so excited about that story and why it's so important to us. So I'm going to read you a bit from the Bible. Very early on Sunday morning it says the women went to the tomb carrying the spices that they had prepared. The women thought that their friend, their best friend Jesus, was still dead because he'd been killed on the Friday and this was the Sunday and they thought that he was dead. So they were gonna go and sit by the tomb and mourn for him. How do you think they felt with their best friend not with them anymore? Well, I was thinking about this and I thought, well, I remember the story that our friend Paul told us a good while ago. And he remembered when he was really, really young, he went on holiday with his mum and dad and, their, and his aunt and uncle, and his aunt and uncle were taking them in their car. And Paul, he was very young, and he had this thing he called his green blanket, which was his lovely blanket that he took everywhere with him. And he particularly liked green blanket at night when he was, when he was going to sleep. And when he woke up in the morning, the very first thing he did was to reach for green blanket into his new day. And they were going in their car on the way on holiday to a holiday cottage. And it was pouring down with rain. And as they were going along, his uncle could hear some rattling coming from the top of the car. And he got out in the rain and he could see that the roof box had come loose and he needed something to wedge 
into the roof box so that it didn't rattle anymore. And this is a true story. This is what Paul told us. And he looked in the back seat in all the rain and he saw this green blanket and he took the green blanket without knowing what it was and he used it to wedge the roof box so it didn't rattle anymore and on they went. And poor Paul, he remembers sitting there thinking, I wonder if I'll ever see my green blanket again. And it's definitely getting all wet and it'll be all horrible and dirty. But I wonder if I'll see it again. And they arrived at their holiday home. It was still pouring with rain. They all got out, went into the cottage, had supper and then... Paul was put to bed without his green blanket and it took him ages to go to sleep. And next morning he woke up and as usual he reached next to his pillow for his green blanket and of course it wasn't there and he suddenly remembered what had happened to his green blanket the day before. And then he opened his eyes and there next to his bed was his mum and his mum was holding in her hand green blanket. During the night she'd gone out and rescued it from the car and washed it. It was still wet, that's why she couldn't put it on his bed. But as soon as it was dry, Paul was able to have green blanket again. And I love that story, that feeling that Paul had when he thought he'd lost his green blanket. It must have been something like what the women felt that Easter morning. And it carries on. When they got to the tomb, they found the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. They went in, but they didn't find the body of Jesus. Suddenly, two men shining in shining white clothes stood beside them. The women were afraid, but the men said, Why are you looking in the place of the dead? For the living. Jesus has been raised from the dead. Jesus is alive. He has been raised from death. How amazing that Jesus had come back to life again. Before we carry on any further, we're just going to listen to what happened in the rest of the story. The women who knew Jesus was alive went back to all Jesus' friends, his disciples, who were locked away. They were in a, in a lockdown room. They were so frightened. And they told the disciples that Jesus had, had been raised from the dead. And the disciples said, yeah, of course he hasn't. And Peter, one of the disciples, went down and found out that Jesus had been raised from the dead. And they knew that what the women had been telling them was true. Jesus was risen. God is good. God is good to Jesus, to the disciples, and God is good to me. I wonder, can you put one finger up like that? Can you put the other and I wonder if you can make your fingers turn into thumbs after three. One, two, three. Oh. Hey, can you do that? Try that again. One, two, three. Oh. We're going to say God is good to me. God is good to me. We're going to sing it. God is good to me. God is good to me. He holds my hand. He helps me stand. God is good to me to me. Should we do that all together? Are you ready? Get your fingers ready. Get ready to turn them into thumbs. Oh, magic. Into thumbs. Here we are. Are you ready? God is good to me. God is good to me. He holds my hand. He helps me stand. God is good to me. Brilliant. Second verse goes like this. God is good to me. God is good to me. He gives me strength to swear my length. God is good to me. Do you reckon you can do both of those verses all the way through? Fingers ready. Here we go. God is good to me. God is good to me. He holds my hand. He helps me stand. God is good to me. And God is good to me. God is good to me. He gives me strength to swear my length. God is good to me. Next verse. This is my favourite verse. Are you ready? God is good to me. God is good to me. He gives me lips to eat my chips. Oh, I love chips. God is good to me. Let's do that all together. God is good to me. God is good to me. He gives me lips to eat my chips. God is good to me. And the last verse goes like this. God is good to me. God is good to me. He gives me jelly to fill my belly. God is good to me. He gives me jelly, nice and wobbly, to fill my belly. 
nice and wobbly. I wonder if you can do all four verses of that song with me. Are you ready? Get your fingers ready. Give them a little shake to get your fingers nice and ready. Here we go. Are you ready? God is good to me. God is good to me. He holds my hand. He helps me stand. God is good to me. God is good to me. If you like swimming, God is good to me. He gives me strength to swim a length. God is good to me. Into the food section. God is good to me. God is good to me. He gives me lips to eat my chips. God is good to me. God is good to me. God is good to me. He gives me jelly to fill my belly. God is good to me. Do you reckon we can do that all again, but twice as fast? See if you can get all the way through. Are you ready? One, two, three, four. God is good to me. God is good to me. He holds my hand. He helps me stand. God is good to me. Yes, God is good to me. God is good to me. He gives me strength to swear my length. God is good to me. Yes, God is good to me. God is good to me. He gives me lips to eat my chips. God is good to me. Yes, God is good to me. God is good to me. He gives me jelly to fill my belly. God is good to me. Yes, well done. Are your fingers all caught up with gods and goods and all the rest of it? Brilliant. God is good. God raised Jesus from the dead. Although not everybody thought it was good. Some people were a bit worried about this. Some people thought that there'd been some kind of trick to steal Jesus' body away, to make it disappear. But it wasn't a trick. Although I know someone who loves tricks. I wonder if you'll love this trick too, because it's time to meet everybody here on Scruffy Church TV. It's time to meet... Reverendo Stupendo! Welcome to my magic show! And apologies to everybody who is Italian. I'm very, very, very sorry. Luciano, mi dispiace. Eh. Anyway, here we are in my magic trick. I'm going to do a magic trick. I'm going to make this tin of tomatoes disappear. I love the Italian tomatoes. It's going to disappear. It's going to be under here like this. And we're going to make it go to this one here. It's a no tomato here. Here's a tomato here. The tin is going to go from one side to the other. And the way we do that is we think. We think, we imagine the tin moving across between these two. It's a no magic, it's a no trickery. It's real, you can see both of the tubes. The tin of tomato is going to go to this side. And the way we do that is like this, we go. We want to move it, move it. We want to move it, move it. We want to move it, move it. We want to move it. That's what we do. You do that at home too, because we all need to do this to make the tin go from here to here, where there is nothing at the moment. Ah, okay, are you ready? Here we go. Is the tin? It's a nothing. Are you ready? We want to move it, move it. We want to move it, move it. We want to move it, move it. We want to move it. Shall we see if the tin has gone? The tin has gone. Has it got? To here, I wonder. It has all the way to this side. It's a brilliant. But do you reckon we can make the tin go back from here, back to here? What do we say? We want to move it, move it. We want to move it, move it. We want to move it, move it. We want to move it. I know what you think. It's a brilliant trick, eh? Thank you very much. Reverendo to Bendo, thank you. What? I can hear you saying. It's a load of rubbish. I can hear you saying, his son of daddy, the tin never got to the other side. Hmm, let's try that again then, shall we? So this side we have the tin. This side we have the no tin. Are you ready? We want to move it, move it. We want to move it, move it. We want to move it, move it. We want to move it. Let's have a look. The tin has a gun. Is it on the other side? Oh, meraviglioso! It's moved! Fantastic! Oh, now can we make it move back again? We want to move it, move it. We want to move it, move it. We want to move it, move it. We want to move it! He's a gun, everybody! And he's a move back to the other side! How fantastic! Well done, everybody! Wait. 
everything is a disappeared. What are we going to do? We want to move it, move it. We want to move it, move it. We want to move it, move it. We want to move it. Are you ready? We're going to count to three. Are you ready? One, two, three. Hey! Reverendo! Stupendo! A fantastic magic trick! But God hadn't made a magic trick. It wasn't magic. Jesus had risen from the dead and was now alive again. And why we love Easter so much is because, not because God did that, not because Jesus came back to life, but what it means for us today, all these years later. Let's go into our prayer room. So you need to take your tube and your paper. I need to take my book and we're going to go into our prayer room together. God says, when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. So first of all, I want you to get your tube and put it on one of the pieces of paper. And then I want to actually, we'll use the red, we'll use the red pen. I want you to draw around it like that, all the way around it. Okay, so we've got a nice circle there. And then you can do what you like in here, but what we're gonna do is we're going to write Love wins. Do you want to have a go at that? Just put that nice circle and write love wins. Right, and when you've done that, you take your other piece of paper, I want you to put your tube over it like that. Because love wins. Jesus has come back to life again. There's Jesus from our knitted, Anita's knitted characters, all sparkling and risen. And what I think happens when Jesus rises again is that Jesus takes all the really awful things in life, all the really terrible things that make life hard. Let's write some of them down. You can write these words or you can draw pictures for them. Unkindness. I'm going to draw a horrible picture of that face there. And this is a sad person who's had unkindness done to them. That's horrible. Or cruelty. So I'm going to draw a picture of a bomb there because we don't like wars and we don't like hatred so a really angry person like that we don't like people who don't like people who are different from them so imagine two different people from two different parts of the world who don't like one another because they're different all these things all of the things that are awful in life. It's like Jesus takes them all into the grave. When he dies, it's like his life is scrunched up like this. So you scrunch up your piece of paper and we put it on top of there and then you can put your tube over the top of it like that. All of those things Jesus takes to the tomb, all the things that make life hard, all the things that lead us away from God's goodness, Jesus takes to the tomb. And of course, when Jesus comes back to life again, all of those things are gone. And the empty tomb that the women found that morning shows us that love wins. Love is stronger than all the nastiness of the world put together. Love wins. So just have a look at your love wins. I've got another one up here next to the candle. So just for a moment, we're just going to be quiet. And we're going to pray for people and for our world. Love wins. Love wins over even death. So we pray for an end to this virus we've got at the moment. 
and we thank you for all the people who are helping us in the health service, people who are producing food, thriving and selling, our councils and our government, people all over the world who are helping us at this time. We thank you for them. Lovely, isn't it, on Thursdays going out and clapping the NHS. Not just the doctors and nurses, but all the people who help, the cooks, the cleaners, people in offices, dentists who are still working. And we pray for people, just hold in mind people you want to pray for. We're praying for Andrew today. We pray that he'll be better really soon and home with his family. And we pray for Michael and for Sid, who are in hospital. Pray for them to be better soon. And for Sophie as well in Copenhagen. We pray for her and all people who've got this disease at the moment. We pray for people who are sad because people they know have died. We pray for David and Natalia this morning and for Carl and Vera and Kate, Ellie and Luke. So we hold all our prayers together in that wonderful Easter Sunday love wins. Love is stronger than everything. Jesus is risen to show love wins. And we hold all our prayers together in the wonderful prayer that Jesus taught us. Let's say this together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. It's great. Let's go back into our scruffy room. And uh, because this is scruffy TV and we record it all at the same time, we don't stop and we don't do any fancy editing or anything like that. I can now tell you that I have forgotten to put something out that I was gonna show you now. So I'm gonna write it down on this piece of paper just to show you that it's not fancy, it's Scruffy. This is our email address and you can write to us here. Oh, there we are. There we are. Scruffy at stephensbath.org.uk. You can write to us there or if you want to go on our website, it's www.stephensbath.org.uk. And you can write to us there if you want to shout out or if you just want to tell us what you like about the programme, about our services, or maybe what you don't like about it. It would be lovely to hear from you. We're going to sing a song at the end here. And these are the words up here. So even if you don't know the words, you'll know the tune because the tune is very familiar. So we sing this first line. We have a king who rides a donkey three times. And then we sing, and his name is Jesus. And here is our Easter wonderful telling of Jesus is risen. Jesus, the king has risen early in the morning. So these are all different things about Jesus that we remember today and we're thankful for today. So let's sing this together. Are you ready? We have a king who rides a donkey. We have a king who rides a donkey. We have a king who rides a donkey. And his name is Jesus. Jesus, the King is risen. Jesus, the King is risen. Jesus, the King is risen early in the morning. Verse 2. We have a King who cares for people. We have a King who cares for people. We have a King who cares for people. And his name is Jesus. For us, Jesus, the King is risen. Jesus, the King is risen. Jesus, the King. Early in the morning, we have a king of Easter rising. We have a king of Easter rising. We have a king of Easter rising, and his name is Jesus. Jesus, the king is risen. Jesus, the king is risen. Jesus, 
risen, the king is risen early in the morning. What shall we do with our life this morning? What shall we do with our life this morning? What shall we do with our life this morning? Give it up in service to Jesus, the king is risen, Jesus, the king is risen, Jesus, the king is risen early. Hallelujah. Jesus is risen. He is risen. Hallelujah. Great to be with you. We'll see you next week on Scruffy Church TV. We know what we do. Put our hand out to receive that blessing of God's love. Feel your hand being warmed. And put that here. Feel God's love and warmth in your body and your soul. Bless us in this week. Give us a great day today. Lots of lovely Easter eggs. And lots of wonderful time to remember that you are risen and that love wins. And we ask your blessing in the name of God, who is our creator, redeemer and Holy Spirit. Amen. Sorry? Of course we were going to check if our hens had laid some Easter eggs for us. Let's go and have a look. Right. And then... After we've seen this, you can get on with the rest of your wonderful Easter day. It's a lovely day today, and I'm excited about these eggs because they are pretty good at laying eggs in our heads. Right, let's go and see if there are any eggs in here. Oh look, there's Pip. Pip. Oh, excuse me, Pip. Can you just can you just move a little bit? Oh, sorry. There we go. Let's just have a look. <gasps> there. Look. <laughs> One of those eggs is Pip's. Thanks, Pip, very much. You can come back on your <laughs> nest now. Oh, so I'm really sorry. You can get back on your nest now. I'll take that one away. Oh, look. There's a cabbage cream egg there. Sorry, Pip. Really, really sorry. Have a great Easter and we'll see you soon on Scruffy TV. Apologies to Pip and lots of love to all of you. Bye.